Hey, how you doing? It's Dylan, the Grumpy Stew, the world's grumpiest flight attendant. And you're listening to the podcast for you, the working flight attendant. Here's what's been making me grumpy lately. It's the people that stand immediately in front of elevator and train doors, thinking they could just push their way into the fucking elevator like there's salmon swimming upstream about to mate. It doesn't work like that. Stand to the side. Let the people already in the train or elevator get out first and then go in. It seems to be easier. For fuck's sake, it's like the people, the parents, that instead of using an elevator, decide to strap their kid to a fucking stroller and go up an escalator. What could possibly go wrong? I don't know. What's a little brain damage? Jumping fucking jetway, Jesus, these people are stupid. Anyway, you're listening to episode 51 of the comedy podcast just for you, the Grumpy Stew podcast. Coming up, we got to talk about that fucking crazy pilot that got high on shrooms and tried to take down a plane. And Delta did something really stupid, which is uncharacteristic for them. But that's all coming up on the Grumpy Stew podcast. But first, a message from our sponsor. Does your child have a hard time sitting down and shutting the fuck up? Has medication proven useless against your mutant spawn? Are you desperate for some peace and quiet? Well, I have the solution for you. The Immobilizer. The Immobilizer is the only car seat that fully immobilizes your child. And with the optional ball gag, you'll finally get the peace and quiet and peace of mind you deserve. Just wrangle your little hell spawn into the immobilizer and the patented restraint system takes over. The immobilizer is not FAA certified for use on commercial aircraft, but we won't tell anyone. The immobilizer. Get yours today. Coming up on the Grumpy Stew podcast, it's all the usual rants, raves, crass humor, and aviation news commentary. Um, But first, a quick word about the podcast often get asked about how you can best support what I do here at the podcast. It's very easy. I know money is tight. There are some very easy things you can do that cost you nothing. Just however you listen to this podcast, like and subscribe. If there's a heart function, you press the heart. If it's a thumbs up situation, just give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. If there's a subscribe uh, feature, share it with all your friends. There's usually a share button. You can share it across social media. And that helps in a lot of ways. If you feel like you can contribute financially, there's shit tons of ways you can do that. There's obviously the merch store. There's, I use um, Amazon affiliate links. Even if it's something you don't want, if you click on one of those links and then go buy something else, I still get a small commission. And everything helps support what I do here. And I think for the first time ever, the Grumpy Stew podcast is about to break even. So thanks for that. Every little bit helps. Even just like sending me news articles, funny jokes, funny memes, funny ideas for topics on the show, whatever. You know, if you like the Instagram or the Facebook, the YouTube, cool. It all helps. All right, on with the show. I think it's time for some Grumpy Stew Aviation News Commentary. This one's actually kind of cool. At a handful of U.S. airports, travelers can now bypass the global entry kiosks and instead verify their arrival in the U.S. on a smartphone using the program's new mobile app. This is going to launch in just a handful of cities at first, but eventually it'll roll out to more cities. But right uh, now, or at least in the near future, it will be available at Dulles at uh, George Bush Intercontinental Airport. And it should also be available in LAX, Miami, Orlando, Pittsburgh, and SeaTac. The Points Guy points out that CBP said it will continue to evaluate the program and expand to other airports in the near future as a way to make the program more secure and efficient for travelers. So I I look forward to that coming to JFK, please and thank you. United is in the process of changing the way they board their passengers. The new process will be boarding the window seat customers first, and then the middle seat, and then the aisle seat. That should be starting, I think, today, in fact. 
And this is just weeks away from the start of the busy holiday travel season, and they're rolling out this new approach and economy. And people are like, oh, great, this is fantastic. Just makes sense. Board the window people first. Great. Yeah, on paper, it makes sense. But you know, this is highly dependent on passengers understanding and following instructions, which we all know they can't do that. So just be more of the same. Moving on. Delta got their asses sued in a class action lawsuit, and they have elected to settle. Oh, it says here that the customer said that the airline wouldn't refund their canceled flights in the beginning of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And let's, let's point out something important here. They were non-refundable tickets. So the airline, instead of refunding the non-refundable tickets, they gave them a credit to go towards future travel. Well, I guess they didn't like that, so they sued, and there was a settlement uh, for the claims. It's, uh, let's see, it's uh, $27 million, and Delta will also pay a 7% interest in cash or credits on top of the refund. And let's see here, an additional 2.3 mil, according to the settlement, that will go towards attorney's fees. And all it is is people bought non-refundable tickets and they didn't get a refund. Huh, shocking. Wow, how about that? American Airlines flight attendants are now demanding a 50% pay raise as contract talks reach possible impasse. Flight attendants at American Airlines are now demanding a 50% raise over the course of a four-year contract as a counter-proposal to the airline's offer of an initial 11% pay raise in addition to a 2% pay raise for the following four years. The APFA had originally demanded a 47% pay raise over just three years, but the union is saying that they're putting the ball in management's court by shaving the initial uplift from 35% to 33%, but adding an additional 5% raise in the fourth year of the contract. It, you know, it, they, they're just trying to match Delta is what they're trying to do. But their, their first proposal was just absurd. Their first proposal was a top out of like $96 an hour, which is absurd. And it's kind of typical union bullshit where they, they throw out some absurd proposal, full well knowing the company is going to reject it and try to meet somewhere in the middle and call it a win. They could have just started with, hey, let's match Delta. And they probably would have gone for it. But no, they threw out the $96 an hour top out pay and all this other absurd bullshit. And of course, they rejected it and they're at an impasse and they voted to strike. Overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly voted to strike. And uh, they're not going to get what they want. So there you go. This one is pretty serious. And this has been in the news the last couple of days. Everybody knows about the Alaska Airlines pilot that did something really, really stupid and dangerous in the flight deck. He was jump seating. He was off duty. He was jump seating on a Horizon Air ERJ. It was probably like a 175 or something. And he's accused of trying to shut off the plane's engines mid-flight. And this is what we know so far is that he said he was having like a nervous breakdown. And he was on a bunch of shrooms and he hadn't slept in like 48 hours or something. And he was out of his mind. And he got his ass subdued when he tried to pull the fire suppression handle. And uh, this, this is a complicated, convoluted thing. But this this uh, pilot is Joseph D. Emerson. He's 44. He's been charged in federal court with interfering with the flight crew. U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Oregon announced Tuesday that uh, the charge comes on the heels of dozens of state charges in Oregon, including 83 felony counts of attempted murder. 83 counts of reckless endangerment and one count of endangering the aircraft. He pleaded not guilty, <laughs> um, which is absurd. Uh, he attempted to cut the fuel to the plane's engines while the flight was en route from Washington State to San Francisco. But it was a quick action from the flight crew, the working flight crew, that kept the engines from failing completely. And they had to divert to uh, Portland, if I'm not mistaken. After the confrontation in the flight deck, he was taken to the rear of the plane and restrained. This, this is what does it for me, is the, the not guilty plea. Obviously, he fucking did it, right? But I'm not guilty. He, he fucking did it, obviously. There's 84 fucking witnesses in that plane that saw him do it. Anyway, uh, while he's in custody, uh, Emerson told a police officer he became depressed about six months ago. 
And uh, Emerson denied taking any meds, but the affidavit says he did discuss psychedelic mushrooms with the responding officer. Uh, The quote says the officer and Emerson talked about the use of psychedelic mushrooms, and Emerson said it was his first time taking mushrooms, and then he decided to go jump seat? Okay, that's weird, but here's some real tea. You want the real tea? Here's some interesting tea. Now, this is rumor, right? Rumor among the pilots. This is rumor. Rumor among the pilots is one of the working pilots on that Horizon flight was sleeping with the crazy pilot's wife. That's some interesting tea right there. And if that's true, you got yourself a motive. And this this ties in with a statement from the government that they do not believe that the incident was an act of terrorism or ideologically motivated violence or anything like that. They, they ruled that out. And he might have perhaps said something about you know, the speculation that I just kind of put forward, the little rumor tea out there that, you know, dude's wife is diddling another pilot. Okay, coming up, Delta hires Tom Brady as a strategic advisor, and it defies all logic, reason, or common sense. And that's coming up on the Grumpy Soup Podcast. Are you a lonely stew? having a hard time meeting the right guy, tired of the trashy singles bars and dating apps? Well, your answer is here. The Drunk Pilot Boyfriend Doll. Ugh, so drunk. The Drunk Pilot Boyfriend Doll is life-size, anatomically correct, and fully functional. I'm a grower, not a shower. And he's hammered. Oh my God, uh Just like a real pilot, he'll eat all of your food. This is free, right? And comes with a mountain of child support and alimony debt. Fuck. Get your drunk pilot boyfriend doll today. Hurry while supplies last. The drunk pilot boyfriend doll. Now, some of you who may know, uh, especially if you follow me on the Instagram, (laughs) for some inexplicably stupid reason Delta Airlines hired Tom Brady as a quote strategic advisor let's just put that to the side for just one quick second if you go back on the Grumpy's 2 Instagram you'll see that I made fun of this considerably I, I think I have like 12 or 13 memes just about Tom Brady being a strategic advisor to an airline. I'm just saying it doesn't make sense. Am I wrong? I don't think it makes all that much sense. Let's just, let's let's explore this for a second. What does Tom fucking Brady know about running a fucking airline? Has anybody stopped to ask this question? That's what I want to know. What does Tom fucking Brady know about running a goddamned airline? What does he know about the logistics of running an airline? All the moving pieces of running an airline. What is he advising them on? Pray tell. Please tell me. What is his advisory role as a football player to a major, important, highly regarded domestic airline in the United States? What is he doing, really? Come on. Is anyone really buying this shit? I mean, really, is anybody buying this shit? What is the football player advising these extremely experienced airline executives on? What does he know that they don't know about running an airline? Of course, they go, well, you know, he's going to be involved in team building. And, uh, you know, and, and, and continuing our upward climb, or whatever the fuck they call it over there, our upward climb and team building. This isn't a football team. It's an airline. It's completely different. It's a false equivalence. It's a logical fallacy. Let me ask you something. Just putting this out there. Just humor me for one fucking second. Who is more qualified to advise an airline strategically 
a football player? Granted, a very successful football player, a football player, or let's say maybe, possibly, I don't know, a retired CEO, or someone who has founded an airline, or someone who has been a very successful airline executive. Who is more qualified to strategically advise an airline? Please let me know, because I'm missing something, clearly. This this bothers me. Why, why does it bother me so much? What the fuck does Tom fucking Brady know about running a fucking airline? It defies all reason and logic. And this is by all measure a highly regarded airline for making a lot of really smart choices. And man, they just made some good decisions during hard times and came out on top. And they turn around and hire Tom fucking Brady as a strategic advisor. I'm calling bullshit. He's not a strategic advisor. Complete and utter bullshit. He's a paid spokesman. Why didn't they just say that? He's a paid spokesman. He, they said it in their own fucking press release. He's going to be making public appearances and talking up Delta. Obviously, he's a paid spokesman. That's all they had to fucking say in the first place. No, he's a strategic advisor. He's going to help us in our upward climb. Bullshit. Call him bullshit. And who knows what the fuck they paid this guy. I'm sure he had to sign an NDA, so we'll never know what he got paid. It's It's ridiculous. Right? I'm, I'm not crazy. I mean, I'm crazy. I'm a little stupid. But this is, I'm not imagining this, right? I didn't just wake up one day and, oh, look, Tom Brady's a strategic advisor to a major airline. It's weird. He's obviously just a paid spokesman. But here's, here's something really kind of interesting that not a lot of people are talking about. Delta invested $150 million to bail out a small private jet uh, company called Wheels Up. They spent 150 mil bailing these people out, and it turns out Tom Brady might have been an interested party in that little fucking airline. Um, so I guess he knows how to make an airline go broke. I suppose he can advise him on that. So, of course, if that's even remotely true and not just speculation or rumor mill, oh, that's, I mean, may not be illegal, but it's at least unethical, right? I mean, it's got to be unethical. It has the appearance of impropriety. And in any other profession, having the appearance of impropriety would oh, get your ass fired or get your ass sued. So I find that little bit of tea just kind of fucking interesting. But what can he do? He's the strategic advisor on who the fuck knows what, I guess. I don't know, whatever football players do, slap each other on the ass, maybe... Uh, who knows what they get up to in the showers, but that's interesting. That's for another podcast, I suppose. But you know what? I think that's going to be episode 51 of the Grumpy Stewed Podcast. Thanks for sticking around this long. I appreciate it. And you can find everything Grumpy Stew at thegrumpystew.com. Make sure you like and subscribe to any of the content I put out there. It really helps me out. And if you feel so inclined, visit the merch store. Buy some shit. It really helps me out. If there's something that you're looking for and you're scrolling through the old merch store and you don't see what you want, message me. Maybe I can make it. Maybe I can put it on the old merch store. Message me. We'll figure it out. All right. Well, until then, go forth. Be grumpy. Be yourself. Don't fake it for these fucking assholes because they don't appreciate you anyway. But I do. I appreciate you, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. So in the meantime... Take care.